John 3, 3. Jesus answered, said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter into the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, the, 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 the mother, the water breaks. He's, he's, born, he's born of his mother. But the second birth, he's born to the Spirit. Born to the Spirit. So when there's a natural birth, there's the water and there's the blood. And then there's the Spirit of the fire. Do you, do you, have you ever thought about this? This is something to think about. The Lord is birthing this world back. First there was the flood, the water. Then 2,000 years ago there was the blood. And then there's going to be the fire that's going to purge it. It's be a new heaven and a new earth. He's birthing it back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so he said, he said, I'm not talking, Nicodemus, I'm not talking about this five foot, 11, this six foot that you see here. He said, I'm not talking about that. That's already been born. I'm talking about that inside of you. That part that Adam lost, that part that died, you must be born again. I'm not just talking about, you can't, you can't go back into your mother's womb, but you got to be born again. Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter to the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. This part right here. This is flesh. But that part which you can't see, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. John 3, 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeneth, and thou heareth the sound thereof, but cannot tell where it cometh and where it goeth. So is every one that is born of the spirit. I want to build a foundation. 2 Corinthians 4, 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perishes, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perishes, yet our inward man is renewed day by day. In the simplest terms, the soul is made up of our mind, our emotions, our free will. In Hebrews, it means breathing creature. It's the most basic definition. It can translate to several different meanings such as soul, mind, or life. Our soul has a tendency to be self-centered. Whereas our spirit was created excellent to communicate with and commune with our God. Our spirit, it is by our spirit that we interact with God. We pray and talk to the Lord in our spirit. That, that, that's the reason they can't stop us from praying. I don't have to pray out loud. Long as I've got any of my mind left, I can seek the Lord. I can draw nigh to the Lord. I can find the Lord. It is by our spirit that we interact with God. We pray and talk to the Lord in our spirit. In this letter to the Romans, Paul states that the Holy Spirit testifies to our spirit that we are children of God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit your soul and your body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, so, so when, 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 when the death angel comes and, and my, my releases from this body, that there's my body. And there's my, there's my intellect or that, that soulish part that, 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 that just ceases, that just there's no, there's no knowledge in the grave. But then there's that soul part, that, or, there, that spirit part, me, there's that spirit part, that eternal part that, that must be born again. And that part is going to spend eternity somewhere. Matthew 18 and 19. Again, I say unto you that if any two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything they shall ask, it shall be done of them of my Father which is in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if any two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. You can't find something nobody ain't preached, but I want to I want to put a twist on this today. I think I found something. We we had a day, we had a day when if we've ever needed the miraculous, we need it right now. If we've ever needed the miraculous, we need it right now. God bless you, dear friend. This is Brother Anthony Wynn. We're in our 20th some year 
of having a TV ministry. It's literally going around the world. God has been kind to us. We have birthed our own TV station, Greater Love TV. My son Micah, the team have worked just countless hours and prayer and fast and seeking God. And, and, it, and God has just amazingly be kind. We have channel 55.12 in Orlando, Florida. And we have four antennas in the state of Ohio. And we would like to bring your ministry uh, into, into the TV world to touch this generation. Our generation needs help. They need to hear your voice. Call us or contact us. We, we have simple directions to help you birth a TV ministry in your church. This is Brother Wynn. Thank you and God bless you. This generation needs to know that God has a people. This generation needs to know that there's still a Joseph left and there's a Moses left and there's an Esther left and there's a Ruth left and there's a Murray left and there's, there's somebody that's praying down at Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The ministry, somebody may be in a mess, but there's somebody praying down at Murray's house. This generation needs to know that he still saves, heals, and delivers. We don't need to always talk about miracles 20 or 30 years ago. We need some last night and yesterday and last week miracles. We need this generation to see I am living proof of the power of God. I am living proof that he still saves, heals, and delivers. And I'm telling you, I've been in prayer a lot this week, and I'm telling you, God wants to lift you up. God wants to manifest himself to you. Hallelujah. I am not the Pope, you don't have to come to me to hear what God says. He wants to speak to you in your prayer closet. He wants to speak to you in your Bible study. It's not just a one person religion or a one person God. It's a body that's rising up. I believe God, I, I believe our children are about to prophesy. I believe our children are about to lay hands on the sick. I believe there's a refreshing that come from heaven. I believe there's an outpour about to pour out from the throne of grace and we're about to see the glory of God in hell attacking you with everything he's got but if you want a miracle you got to find you got to be two agree together hallelujah if any two can touch and agree if any two shall touch and agree if any two shall agree Mark 11, 23, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall call, shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. I went through story after story in the Bible, scripture after scripture, and I've, I've read, and first you've got to hear it. How can they hear except a preacher? You got to hear it. You got to read it for yourself. It's got to speak to you. You got to hear it somehow. You, you got to hear it. Then after you hear it, you got to let it. You got to let it roll over in your spirit. And then you got to realize it's alive and it's real. This, this is not, this is more than a history book. This is more than ge geography book. This is more than an a autobiography and a biography. This is more than, than a love story. This is more than a, a, a murder story. This is more, this is more than a war story. This is a living oracles. This is a living word of God. This Bible is alive. They, they know other, they know other book that could be written on all the different co continents and all the different times. And each verse could speak to each generation in a separate way. Oh, did you hear that? Hallelujah. Each verse, each verse, it spoke in the 12th century, the 13th century, the 14th century. This Bible spoke to us in the 19th century, the 20th century. This Bible, it just keeps talking. It's a, it's a living book. It's a living word. It's a living, it's a living testimony of the Lord. First, you hear it. Hallelujah. You, you preach it, reading your Bible, studying second, then you start saying it. If it reads in there by his stripes, you're healed, you read it, and you just can't keep it in your mind, you got to start saying it out loud. He He's going to heal me. I am healed by his stripes. I am healed by his stripes. I'm going to walk in health by his stripes. I'm going to be renewed. This, this, this cancer will not kill me. This heart trouble will not kill me. This diabetes will not kill me. This, this ailment will not kill me. This disease will not kill me. First you read it, then you got to start saying it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If your bills are due, if you, if you run out of money, you got to read it. But my God shall supply all 
all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You've got to read it until it gets in your spirit. And then you've got to start saying it out loud. You watch me walk out of this. You watch me own my own home. You watch me pay my vehicle off. You watch me have food on my table. You watch God move for me. I wish somebody said out loud, you hang around. Watch God make a way for me. I was young, but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen his seed begging bread. You've got to read it. It's got to get in your spirit. Then you got to say it. Hallelujah. you got lost love with the enemy. Whisper, they're going to hell. They'll never change. They're too bad. They're too big. It's they've gone too far. It's too much. Hallelujah. You've got to read it. His grace reaches. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but should have everlasting life. Somebody ought to stand your feet and say, my boy's name's in there. My little girl's name's in there. My grandchildren's name's in there. My, my siblings' name's in there. Hallelujah. Whosoever would believe on him. First you got to you got to read it. Then you got to start saying it. You're not going to hell. You'll not burn in the pit. Devil will not win. This thing will not break you. This addiction will break. You will have freedom. You will be set free. You will be restored. You will be drawn back. You will be delivered. Oh, somebody help me right now. First you got to read it. Then you got to start saying it. Romans 10, 8. For what saith it, the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart. The word of truth which we preach. If any, this, I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to preach. I like to kind of let, let it hang and then you grab it and say, I get it. I'm going to tell you what I want to preach. We got a lot of people saying it. He going to bless me. He going to heal me. He going to save my family. We got a lot of word. But your heart don't agree. And Pentecostal people, we, 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 we've got, we think if there's no weeds in our life, how great we are. But it's not the absence of weeds that makes you a garden that's going to affect this generation. It's the presence of fruit. I don't want to get so caught up pulling the weeds out that I never bear no fruit. I don't want to get so caught up just, just being a, a weedless garden that I never feed the hunger, give drink to the thirsty, hope to the hopeless, strength to the weary. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I wish somebody would lift your voice and cry out, God, let me be a garden that will affect this generation. Let my life be a light in these dark times. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. For what saith that the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart is the word of faith which we preach and when he saw Matthew 21 19 and when he saw a fig tree in the way he said to it and found he came to it and found nothing there on it there was no fruit on it but there's only leaves it looked good but it had no fruit and he said unto it let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever and presently the fig tree withered away and when the disciples saw it they marveled saying how soon is a fig tree withered away Jesus answered and said unto them verily I say unto you if you have faith and doubt not if you have faith, and, and I know, I know I'm going to get under somebody's skin, but if you have faith and doubt not, does that mean you can have faith and doubt a little bit? I got faith that a virgin had a baby. I got faith that he spoke nothing in this world coming to existence. But do we really have faith that he's going to move for you? Hey friend, this is Brother Anthony Wynn. If you or any of your friends or family or loved ones are dealing with addiction, we have written a book here. It's people's story of breaking every chain. It's people that were dealing with different types of addiction. If God moved for them, He'll move for you. If He broke the chains in their life, He'll break the chains in your loved one's life. Can we send this to you as a free gift? If you know anyone who's dealing with any type of addiction that needs chains bro broke, God still saves, heals, and delivers, and Jesus cares about you. Contact us here. We want to be a blessing to you. It's a free gift to you, and we'll pay the postage. This is Brother Anthony Wynn. Would you pray for us? Thank you, and God bless you. Hey, friends, this is Brother Anthony Wynn. In the Bible, in the book of Acts, it talks, and handkerchiefs and aprons were taken off the body of Paul, and special miracles was wrought. We believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We mail out hundreds of prayer cloths here at, here at Oasis Ministries to whatever the need is, to the sick, whatever you're facing. People have put these on their bodies and took them in the operating room. So if you need one of these prayer cloths, would you write us or call us? We'll pay the postage. We want this to be a gift to you. Jesus cares about you. We're praying for you. Thank you and God bless you.
Hey friend, this is Brother Anthony Wynn. This is one of my favorite books that we've written here, You Can't Kill a Promise. I used to worry about David approaching, approaching Goliath, poor little old me. That wasn't David at all. David said, Goliath, I know something you don't know. I'm anointed to be the next king. I've not sat on the throne yet. I have a promise from Jehovah. I can't die. Somebody's going to die on this field today, but it won't be me. I have a promise. It's for your marriage, for your children, for your ministry, for your business. The enemy cannot kill your promise. You need this book. Call or write us right now. This is a free gift to you. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Two preachers are in prison. Two good men are in prison. Pa Peter walks out, but James is beheaded. Which one am I going to put all my... Which one am I going to preach about? Which one am I going to talk about? Both good men. Both men of God. Both men of God. Does, 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 does Peter getting delivered make God any bigger? Or does James being beheaded make God any smaller? Somebody needs hallelujah. So we, 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 over in the office, we had one of our computers mess up here a while back. And I heard somebody say, well, let's just restart it. Let's just erase everything and reboot it and restart it. Somebody needs to restart today. And you need to tell the devil, no longer will I live for God and judge him by my circumstance. Because some days I feel good and some days I feel like I've been run over. Some days I have victory and some days I'm beat up. I'm going to live by God according to this living word of God. And I feel victory in this place right now. I'm telling you, if, we, if we're facing the times ahead that I'm seeing in the Spirit, if there's ever been a time you're going to have to lean on the Word of God, we're about to approach it right now. But I'm prophesying to you, I don't know everything that's going on in this world. I just know till Jesus comes, there'll be food on your table. There'll be peace in your mind. He'll make a way for you. Hallelujah. If we can't get to the doctor, he's a healer. He's a physician. If we can't get to the grocery store, he can still let man a fall from heaven. He can still let a covey of quails blow in. He's a way maker. He's a provider. I was young but now I'm old but I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Is there anybody that makes your mind up I want to fall in love with him all over again. I want to trust him all over again. I want to find his grace and his glory all over again. If you have faith and doubt not if you have faith and doubt not, then, then he's got to be saying you can have some faith and yet some doubt. I, I, I'm going to preach a lot today. I'm going to preach a lot in a little while. We have been so mean to people that doubt it. We've criticized them. We've almost broke some of them. Then we sing, oh, I want to be like Jesus. When Jesus finds Peter doubting, he don't rip his hide. He reaches out and gets a hold of him. I wish somebody could hear that. When he finds him, when he finds him, Peter, Peter was the, out, of the, out of the 11 or 12 there. He's the only one that got out of the ship. Then we rip his hide. He got his eyes off of Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know how big those waves was and how, how loud that thunder was and how, how, how bright that lightning was. I just know that something shook his world so much that he glimpsed away from Jesus for a moment. And when he did, he began to sing. But Jesus didn't, didn't hit him in the head and send him to hell. He reached out a hand and he said, why did you doubt? But he reached out a hand and he turn him around. Hallelujah. I believe the master is going to reach a hand out in here today and say, yeah, yeah, you didn't go the way you thought it would go with your daddy and yet didn't go the way you thought your sister would get better and yet didn't go the way you thought the marriage would stay together and yeah, you thought the children but yeah, you thought something. Hallelujah. But I've come to reach out a hand to you today and to tell you I'm still God. How do your circumstances not change my word? Your circumstances not change who I am. Your circumstances not made me greater or less. I'm still the Lord. I'm still everything that Bible says I am. I can still let manna fall from heaven. I can still let fire fall from heaven. I can still put a wall of protection around you. I can still roll back Red Seas. I can still roll back Jordan Rivers. And I feel miracle power in this room right now. Has anybody ever had a real genuine miracle? Has anybody ever saw the miraculous of God? If he did it one time, he can do it again. If he moved one time, he can move again.
the mind must not be divided between the power and the will of God and the difficulties and the discouragement which attend the case, but must believe in hope against hope and a full persecution of accomplishment for one of this face without doubt the disciples could not cure the child. Hallelujah. So David and the men came to the city. Behold, it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Say what you want to. It's a fact. The city's burned. It's a fact. His wife is gone. It's a fact. His money's been stolen. It's a fact. His sheep and camel are taken. It's a fact. His children are gone. It's a fact. His house has been burned. Then David and the men that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. It's okay to cry, but you can't cry the rest of your life. It's okay to weep, but you and I can't weep the rest of our life. It's okay to get hurt, but we can't stay hurt the rest of our life. It's okay to feel emotions, but I cannot live in my emotions the rest of my life. Hallelujah. And David's two wives were taken captive. Hallelujah. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. And I wish this was talking about the Philistines. And I wish this was talking about the lost world. But this was talking about the church surrounded David. David's in one of the biggest battles of his life. And he looks around for somebody to help him. And everybody else is in the battle. David's in one of the worst storms of his life. And he looks around for somebody to hold his hands up. And everybody else is in a storm. And I'm preaching right now. David's wanting somebody to lift him up. And he looks around and everybody's going through what he's going through. And he wants to quit. And he wants to die. And he wants to give up. But something got a hold of him. My mouth says he's God. My mouth says he killed a lot. But all I see is these doubters around me. All I see is discouragement around me. All I see is hate around me. All I see is I've lost everything and I have nothing. i got to walk away from all of this and i got to get in his presence and I've got to encourage myself in the Lord. I'm preaching to somebody right now. There'll be a turn in your life if you'll walk away from the battle and encourage yourself in the Lord. 1 Samuel 38, And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And answer, pursue, for thou shalt overtake them, and without fail, recover all. I feel a recover all anointed in this house today, and I've never said that out loud. It's the will of God for you to recover your health. It's the will of God for you to recover your peace. It's the will of God for you to recover your serenity. It's the will of God for you to recover your faith. It's the will of God for you to recover your relationship with the Lord. It's the will of God for you to recover your finances at Hell's robbed and stole. It's the will of God. It's the will of God to recover all. And I wish somebody would help me reach for this anointing right now. Hallelujah. Hell's plumbered and tried to rob you and break you and destroy you. But I feel a recover all anointing in here. Hallelujah. But you're not gonna, you're not gonna you're not gonna get what I'm preaching today. If you make up your mind, I'm just gonna sulk in my self-pity and live in this battle. You gotta get above this battle and you gotta encourage yourself. You gotta get above above everybody around you and you got to encourage yourself. How can you help the others when you stay where they are? But if somebody will get up, the rest of us will get up. I I wish you'd turn around and ask, is it you? Is it you? Who's going to get up? If somebody will get up, let God be for you. I'm telling you all get up. If you'll bring me back a report, I just saw a miracle. I just saw the hand of God. I just tasted of the glory of the Lord. I just had a visitation from heaven. Jesus just stood in my room. Jesus just touched me. Jesus just called my name. I've quit bleeding. I've had a miracle. I've had a turnaround. I'm going to give you some places to start. This will turn your life around. Start Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Go to Genesis 1 and 3 and God said let there be light and there was light. Slip down to Genesis 1 11 and God said let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit fruit, fruit trees yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is itself upon the earth and it it was so. Go down to Genesis 1.16 and you ought, to, you ought to go out one night and read that and then go out in the morning when the sun's coming up and you need to read that God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe
believe if he can make the sun and if he can create the moon, I don't believe there's a disease in your body he can't heal. I don't believe there's a burden he can't bear. I don't believe there's a need he can't meet. I don't believe that you have no provisions that he can't supply. Hallelujah. I wish somebody would reach out to him right now. Hallelujah. The devil, the devil's tried to make him big and in your eyes that he's going to move for everybody else, but he's not going to move for you. But I'm here to tire that lie down and send it back to pit, to the pit and tell you he's a personal savior. He wants to move for you. He wants to make a way for you. He wants you to have confidence, pray and doubt not. The crowd was great but she knew she had to reach him. He was her last hope of ever being healed so she pressed through until she touched his garment and right then and there her miracle was fulfilled I feel healing in this house oh there's a miracle oh it's in the making there's one just for you the father he's prodded it even now your prayers have been heard and the answers are In the making for you to, and I feel what I'm singing. Hallelujah. Oh, there's a miracle in the making. There's one just for you. The Heavenly Father's provided it even right now. All your tears have already been heard. And I know that, I know that, I know that the answer's on the way. If you'd reach out and get a hold of it, there's a miracle in the making for you today. Hey friend, this is Brother Anthony Wynn. This is one of my favorite books that we've written here, You Can't Kill a Promise. I used to worry about David approaching, approaching Goliath. Poor little old me. That wasn't David at all. David said, Goliath, I know something you don't know. I'm anointed to be the next king. I've not sat on the throne yet. I have a promise from Jehovah. I can't die. Somebody's going to die on this field today, but it won't be me. I have a promise. It's for your marriage, for your children, for your ministry, for your business. The enemy cannot kill your promise. You need this book. Call or write us right now. This is a free gift to you. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us at Anthony Wynn Ministries. This is our 20th year of touching hearts and changing lives through TV ministry. And this is made possible by our partners. Because of your kindness, we have reached over 150 million homes worldwide. And we're currently in the process of constructing a new office space and studio building. It is our goal to double in size this year and add new stations to our outreach. Currently, we send out thousands of free resources monthly, and your donations and partnerships make this possible. Partner with us today and become part of our ministry as we reach an orphanage in Haiti, a recovery center, and all our local missions. When you partner with us, you can receive a free DVD or CD, a monthly newsletter, and an Oasis magazine. Just call 1-877-226-4088 or visit our website at anthonywin.org. Thank you. God bless you.